Morton Island, a 44 kilometer stretch of one of the most amazing sand islands in Oz. Known for its steep dunes, beautiful sand, and the famous Tangaluma wrecks, this is my first time over here, and the first time the patrol gets to hit the sand. Tagging along this trip is my mate Jesse and his family in their GU patrol. I've also got the fam in mind, camp trailers loaded up, the fuel's topped off, and we're on the barge for the 90 minute ride over to the island. Just got off the barge. As you can see, the patrol is behind me. Just got to wait for Jesse and his patrol to get off. Here's the barge there. Got the camp trailer and the patrol. I think we actually are just gonna go straight to camp. I mean, Tangaluma Rex are right there. So that's what we did, except we went the wrong way. So we checked the VMS and turned around. Further back, we go off left and then go around. And we're at, at the camp. <laughs> did you bring the Max tracks? Yeah. We'll be good then. Full drive action, always say Max tracks. few inland tracks and we ended up on the south side of Tangaluma. We decided to camp on the southwest side because of the winds over the next four days. But my mind can't get no Proudly supported by Superior Engineering, Diesel Conversions Australia and in part by. Finally found a spot we've been driving on the beach for a little while but this spot guys, this is bloody beautiful. Moreton Bay is uh, definitely a very nice place to be. This is our little private cut in here. As you can see, we've got the boats out there. Tangaluma Rex isn't too far down that corner, but as you can see, guys, beautiful blue ocean. I'm excited about this spot. I think this is this is the place to be, I can tell. And then you get this, call this base camp. This will work just fine. We'll call this base camp. So we are camping with Alicia, my partner, and my son, Wolfie. Now, Alicia's very pregnant at the moment. I think you got about five weeks left, four weeks left, and she's gonna pop. This is Wolf's second time camping. Both times have been in the trailer, but we just haven't had um, the car or the time to take this thing out since we built it. So I need to get this thing set up. I'm gonna pull it into this little area here. I'll check you guys on a little T-lapse. We'll throw the trailer in, get it set up. For those of you guys who haven't seen the trailer, I'll run through it a little bit in a second. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna get this thing set up. So today is Sunday, we got here yesterday. We literally just got here, set up, found a spot, you know, the, the usual, and then had dinner and went to bed. But today we're up exploring, and the first spot we are gonna go hit is called the Blue Lagoon, which is on the north and eastern side. None of us have ever been to Morton, so it's a little bit of trial and error with the touristy spots, but we're gonna head there first. There's also a spot called the Desert, which is uh, through the inland trails and in the middle of the island, which we wanna check out a little bit later. Uh, but we do want to hit this blue lagoon, we want to hit some sand dunes with the bodyboards, just do a little bit of exploring today. So that's the plan. So we'll bring you guys along. On an island surrounded by salt water is a lagoon made up of 2.5 thousand million cubic meters of fresh water. I don't know who did that measurement and why it's not in liters, but anyway, it's a lot of fresh water. And after a freezing cold mid-winter swim, we're straight back in the rigs and we're ready for a drag race. Definitely won that for sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> now that we've established dominance on the sand with the ZD30, we're gonna head up to the point and uh, check it out. Well, this side is a lot different to the other side, but because of the winds, we camped on the east side. This is the west side. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit windier here, but obviously a much nicer beach to drive on. So it's kind of nice for a change of scene. I've been down so long. But my mind can't get no rest. We just got to the point and we found this little track off to the side. So we're gonna explore up here. It is going up a hill. So I assume that this is going to the top of the track. We just hit a T intersection, turn right. We're hoping this leads up to the lighthouse because we've seen a lot of whales before. So we're hoping that if we can get up to the top, we can suss out some more whales because that'd be pretty cool. The upwards trajectory. Right, Wolf and I are going to go off and find a nice little picnic spot, get some lunch in us, and then we might head up to the lighthouse. It's literally just up there we'll head up and suss it out see if we can spot any whales eh wolfie there's a nice little grass spot here probably just eat lunch somewhere on that it's not windy at all here which is mint and the car is working so bloody good so fun to drive on the beach i'm stoked I've with been it down so long, but my mind can't get no rest no no this ain't easy darling we got salad wrap on the mug. Cheap stuff. Top of the lighthouse. Lucy's loving it. What do you reckon about the whales there, Jesse? Good. Good whale? What do you rate it out of 10? Well, nine and a half. Oh, that's a good whale. Yeah, what do you reckon? Is it world flat or is it? Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, oh. that's that's the water, the big waterfall. Yeah, it just goes if you took a dinghy out there, he'd fall straight off it. Down. Look at him, he just wants to go running with the whales. I think that's a water crossing here somewhere. Uh, don't forget the log cabs in. Right, I've just pulled up at these shipwrecks here. I actually have no idea what these are or why they're here, but uh, it's pretty cool to see. Might just quickly check these out and, I don't know, what sort of boat do you reckon this one was? Yeah, you know, shipwreck. Yeah. Number two. This is like probably, a, most likely a Toyota boat. Yeah. Built by Toyota in like, in probably 2020, this was built. And then they rested it here. It's actually pretty cool to see this old stuff that's just, you know, rotting away. Nature's taken it back. It's pretty cool, but we're going to move on. Um, I think we're going to head back to Tangaluma, which is more shipwreck. Basically, got to head that way. Um, fair distance, like this island is actually huge. Now, I don't know if I've said, but it is my first time here. So I don't really know my way around. The VMS is not working. It worked yesterday, but it's not working today. I don't know why. Uh, so we're just sort of playing it by ear, but we do know that that is south and we are camped down that way. So we need to head there anyway. We have some bad weather coming. Um, tomorrow is meant to be raining as well which kind of sucks. We don't know what we're going to do tomorrow, but hopefully it doesn't rain all day. We should probably hit up the sand dunes soon. The desert. If it's raining tomorrow, oh, yeah. we're going to bomb some hills today. It's going to be so funny because I reckon that the bodyboards aren't going to slide probably at all. I, I really reckon that the bodyboards are just going to go. Ur! I reckon we're going to have to like have a run up and then like jump on it and then slide. Yeah, and then we'll go. Yeah. <laughs> How's the ZD30 going on the sand? Good. Is this, a, this is the first time you've driven this on the sand? Second time. Second time, yeah. It's going all right? Yeah, it's good. What a rig, mate. Yeah. I thought it'd overheat for sure, but it's not too bad. My, my top's been like 90, the hottest it's got. 90's not hot at all. No. I was driving this thing yesterday and it got to 98. Yeah, I was towing the trailer. We hit soft sand for ages. I was powering through it and it hit 98 water temp. Um, but when I pulled up, it just comes straight down, so. Like literally straight, went from like 98 down to like yeah, I don't know what my EGTs 85. are, but yeah. I don't want to know. What are EGTs? If you've got the gauge, you're just going to keep looking at it, so. Yeah. <laughs> 
So we jump back in the car and head south to the Tangaluma shipwrecks. Previously, this area was used as a whaling station in the 1950s, and unfortunately, this station took the lives of more than 6,000 humpback whales. Luckily, it's now more about preserving the ocean, creating a safe haven for over 200 species of fish around these deliberately sunken ships. It's awesome to see this, and I think it's very important that we keep missions like this going. Right behind me is a massive hill. And I mean massive, it actually doesn't look that bad on camera, but it is freaking huge. I got two bodyboards in the back. I mean, Jesse, you're gonna run up this thing. I mean, that does not look that big on camera, but that's freaking huge. Uh, it does say, be careful. <laughs> on the side, it literally, literally says spinal injury and shit, but we'll test her out, we'll test her out. I think I'm gonna have to like have a run up and then like jump on it. Oh mate. Oh this shift's awesome mate. It just goes, eh? Hey? There's no overdrive on at the moment, so you've only got three gears. Oh, right. Why patrols have come in with a 4 day? I don't know. <laughs> How nice is the throttle though? Yeah, it's not. It's way better. Mine, if you sit in mine, you're like, <laughs> I don't know if it's every patrol or what. Uh, it's every patrol. When I had the ZD30, it's super touchy throttle on it. I actually complained about it in my throttle controller video. I mean, throttle controller fixes it a little bit, uh, a but, little not, bit, but not, not like, it doesn't fix it. The 4 day fixes it. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> oh, I want one. <laughs> yeah, you feel it, eh? The 4J on the sand, and uh, obviously last week we took it out to Glassy as well. It is driving extremely well. Even like Jesse's obviously got the ZD in his patrol, and it's pretty impressive, eh? Like yeah, the whole a, setup. Well, the difference. Yeah, the auto and the, and the 4J together, especially on the sand, like it's actually proving to be a super nice setup. I do feel like it belongs in this car. Yeah, it drives For some good. reason. Yeah. And at this power. Yeah. They should have come out at 270 yeah. horsepower. <laughs> yeah, we're actually looking for a bin because there's not many, very many bins on Morton. We've got a whole heap of like rubbish that the birds have been getting into. So we need to dump that somewhere. Hopefully we can find something. Do you know where the bins are? Bins are around at Tangaluma, we're just gonna have where to... we just come from. We found the bins, oh, yeah. finally. Let's get rid of our rubbish. We need to dump that out. It's like a 30 minute drive just to get the bloody bins. Right. Pulling in a can with one of the best views, mate. Ooh, look at that. Sunset. As you can see, the water has just absolutely glassed off for us this afternoon. Now, I'm going to give you guys a quick run through of the camp setup because a lot of people haven't seen this camp trailer. A lot of you guys have. I know that this trailer was pretty popular. Little series that we did. Now, I built this thing out of an old, like, 96, I think it was, army trailer. Cut the front off. We've got a box on the front for storage. Right here is the kick-ass shower awning with kick-ass shower tray, so we can actually open this up and have a nice hot shower. I do have a hot water system from Kick-Ass on board as well. Quickly show you guys the front. I've got some clothes dry and ignore that, but we've got the spare 33 inch tire. We've got 60 liters of water. These are all hooked up to a water pump, which I'll show you guys in a sec. But in here, we've just got storage and fire extinguisher and stuff like that. The main thing that we obviously use is the tent. That is the King's uh, rooftop tent. Surprisingly enough, this tent is huge inside. We uh, used to have one of these on my Navara, and then I sold the Navara and sold the tent, but the tents from Kings are actually really good. I highly recommend them. They are just really nice to camp out of. In the back, we have our drop-down main kitchen table that just drops down, folds up. Right here, we've got drawer. This is for storage, lights, cooking stuff, all that sort of stuff. We've got the Kings fridge drawer, packed full of goodies and food, as you can see. And then at the back, we've just got our accessory panel. And they've also got lights on every corner 
of the trailer there and that's all switched by this and then the bottom switch here is the water that is for the water gun right here so we've got onboard water that's at 60 liters that was at the front the idea behind it was to roll up to camp and within like 10 15 minutes be fully set up and uh, just have all the essentials not go over the top with a lot of stuff it's just got a basic uh, 120 amp kick-ass battery in it it's nothing special there's no lithium no red vision nothing like that we just kept it super simple super easy to use and it's just worked a treat so we're going to start cooking we're making nachos tonight and uh, I'm very excited about that Doritos in home brand only two tins of kidney bean one packet of taco seasoning taco not burrito cook the beans off with the mix one can of diced tomatoes one can of corn kernels put the bean mix on top of the chips tomato salsa on and then some cheese while it's still hot absolutely wet and stormy outside so what we're doing is just gonna head south and uh, get to this mirror pools and then maybe cut through the inland track and just see what we can find just explore the island right we found the inland track that's heading to Karingal it's the uh, mirror pools bypass because you can't get past the mirror pools the tide's still too high so we have to take this to get to Karingal which is like a little town it's uh, still raining outside a little weather check don't think it's gonna stop but uh, it's not gonna rain on our parade slash uh, cafe so we're gonna stop in and get a coffee it's a pretty cool little spot oh look at the fishy fishy this place is actually so nice so we're gonna go in get something to eat and possibly something to drink Unless you are a resort guest on the island, the gutter bar is the only place to stop and get a feed. So that's exactly what we done. The chips were 10 out of 10, but the calamari was chewy. <laughs> Tip review is one of the best chips I've ever had, actually. It's most honest, that is an honest review. Right, that was an awesome little pub. It's called the gutter bar, if anyone's wondering. It's uh, on the inland track on the very south side. Probably the best chips I've had in a long time. So great little feed and there's a little convenient shop there. So we've got some stuff for later on, which is mint. So we're gonna keep cruising. We're just gonna go exploring and uh, see what else we can find. Obviously it's still raining, so not much we can sort of do or film, but we're just gonna go for a drive. Right, we've made it to what's called the desert, and this is in the middle of Morton Island. This is absolutely huge. Now, the patrol had a little bit of a failure. It's the first one of the trip. The steering dampener come off the bracket, so I've just zip tied it to the steering arm. The nut for that will be long gone in the track somewhere. I don't know where I lost it, but Jesse told me to pull over. They've actually gone back to camp, but I really just wanted to show Alicia how cool this uh, desert looks. Like the size of that bloody sand dune down there is enormous the rain has kind of died down just a little bit but as you can see it's still raining uh which kind of sucks so we're not going to go for too much of a walk wolf just loves running around in the sand so we're just going to have a quick little play with him and then we'll probably head back to campsies where's dad's car 
Yeah, that's right, brother. It seems like every time we go camping, it rains. And our tent got soaked last night. It's day four, it's pack up day, but I'm in no rush with how nice this view is. Right, it's day four. We are packed up on our little uh, Morton Island trip. Now we've got a heap of rubbish that we need to take to the bin and then I think we're just gonna do a bit more exploring. The sun has finally come out. Literally been raining all night and all this morning, so it's nice to finally see the sun. We're gonna go enjoy it while we can. Right, so we're back at the desert. We just dropped the rubbish off. As you can see, Wolf is loving it. We we're here yesterday, but it was raining. Today, we've got the bodyboard. There's some big hills to be bombed. Over the back there is massive. So we're gonna put the drone up and gotta send some bloody sand hills. Yeah, Wolfie. Maybe Wolfie needs to go down some of the big hills, eh? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> No rest. No, no. I've been down so long that my mind can't get no rest. No, no. This ain't easy, darling. Cause the devil was on my trail. I've been running. Mate. Fun, fast, <laughs> funny, hot and sweaty, yeah, for sure. Good part is, that's pretty fun. Bad part is, walking back up sucks. So we're taking the uh, bottom route and back to the cars. So I think we're gonna head back to Tangaluma, wait for the barge, 12 o'clock now. Our barge is here at two o'clock. So only a couple of hours, we might just go back, have a swim. It's a little bit hot out, which is really nice, but it'd be nice to just dunk ourselves in the ocean. Firstly, I want to say it is quite expensive to get over here. I think I paid 450-ish dollars to get over with the trailer because you got obviously on the barge you got to pay for the meterage. Uh, I think it was 200 something. Yeah, so 200. And, I think it was 250. It's, it's so. pretty up there still. Yeah, 250 yeah. for the barge for just a GU patrol. But yeah, because we got the trailers 450. Um, then once you've got the barge and you've paid for it, you also have to pay every day here just to drive on the beach. And then you have to pay for your camping spots as well. I think the camping was about $60 for the four days and three nights. Uh, so about 20 bucks a day. Permit to drive on the beach was about 60 bucks for the four days as well. Um, so if you combine all that together, it does get quite expensive with your fuel and food and stuff like that. Yeah, I say four days is pretty perfect. I don't think you want any, unless you're like just full relaxing here. Um, I think four days to explore the whole island's enough, mm. I reckon drove and then had like a day there and then drove back to camp and then the next day had somewhere else like i feel that was pretty good yeah i, I reckon doing. four days is perfect if you're coming to morton another thing that we should probably address is that there's a resort on the island unless you're a resort guest you're not allowed to use any of their stuff you can't even technically walk on their pier or anything um just kind of rude I thought we were going to have dinner and stuff there yeah which are not even allowed in the restaurant there's not enough bins I feel like yeah, they do need more bins. They need more bins. Like if you want to keep, like our campsite was relatively clean. Yeah. But other ones, there's just rubbish. But like even at the start of every little camp thing, there should be a communal like bin. Yeah. I feel, and there's only like we've only really found one bin that's up here. Camping spots. Yeah, we, like we we, we, we stayed it. we stayed in the one spot, which was good because we had yeah. so much junk that we had. Yeah, definitely. But, I I wouldn't probably recommend like moving spots the island's small enough that you can just set up a base and i'd probably recommend near the middle so that way you yeah. can go north south whatever yeah and if you go too far south a lot and i think too far north as well you can't get past the beach at high tide i think there is some bypass tracks that you can go to but 
for the majority of like north and south i think it's closed during high tides we're just the south side just of tangaluma so sort of in the middle but there's a really nice spot if you were going to book and you're really unsure i would probably suggest from the middle to north and on the west side the yeah. east side yeah. the whole time we were here the east side was blowy yeah. i mean obviously the winds can change but i'd probably personally if i was to come back i'd probably book a little bit north and the here. sunset too you get to see the sunset if you're on this side yeah sun the sunset is awesome here you get to see glasshouse mountains and all that over the water so you can't get any fuel here so if you if you are staying then let's say longer than four days like i'm already half way over half of my thing i'm down to a quarter yeah like it, yeah. there's no fuel so if you are staying longer you make sure you pack your fuel because yeah there's no servo or nothing here that you can use yeah, so four days in a tank of fuel is fine I think five days you're probably pushing it, depending on how far you travel, but yeah, you definitely keep that in mind, all you petrol boys and LS1 boys, pack your jerrys before you come over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a bloke come off the barge with his big caravan and sunk straight to the bottom, so I mean, I don't think this is really a caravanning spot. I think that's pretty obvious. I'd say I don't really people. know why people bring caravans here. Yeah, it's too, like, it's too boggy. The, yeah. in, the inland tracks, they're one way and there's these massive tourist bus that come through and you have to back up and find a spot even with my little trailer on it was kind of hard we had to back up like 40 meters and then pull up on the side so the bus could get past us so if you tow in a caravan i mean definitely stay on like the west side right near the barge because <laughs> you're not going to make it very yeah. far so there's only one shop that we know of where you can get food and it was like not even really food eh? it was like tim tams yeah and, chocolate and stuff like that snacks pretty well yeah, snacks and that was down where we like right on the south in that town that we uh had lunch at so if you are planning on staying here for a little bit longer you need to pack more food than you need because i'm hungry right now and they have the best <laughs> chips i reckon if you had to give it a rating of, yeah stars out of 10 out of 10 probably an eight yeah i, I think i'll like give it the same in conclusion i think we're both going to give it an eight out of ten for overall goodness but yeah if i was to come back i'd probably stay a little bit north and yeah definitely west compared to fraser i reckon you could stay on fraser for a full week and you still haven't even really seen it all mm. all right that's it guys we'll another, catch you later another episode another episode done, done.